Welcome to the Legacy Leaders Podcast. Are you doing the best for your client to help them create their legacy? Are you creating a plan that goes far beyond finances to help people ensure that it becomes the driving force behind all decisions? On this podcast, hosts Katie Beth Hand and Stan Miller will help you with growing your practice and your client's peace of mind. Together, they bring the best and brightest minds to share with you how to help your clients develop their best legacy. And now, here are your hosts, Katie Beth and Stan. Welcome back to the Legacy Leaders Podcast with your hosts, Stan Miller and Katie Beth Hand. Our guest today is investment banker, entrepreneur, and host of the Lifetime at Work podcast, Greg Martin. Greg, thank you so much for joining us. We are so excited to have you with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited too. Excellent. Excellent. So before we just kind of dive right in, we love to always start by getting our guests to give us just a little bit of background about how you got into your industry. You're an investment banker, you're an angel investor, and you're an entrepreneur as well. And then, of course, all of these things have led to you starting the podcast, which we want to talk about. So tell our listeners just a little bit about your background and how you got into this industry in the first place. Yeah, so I did an undergrad in business, liked finance, managed to get a job in investment banking, and which put me into this. Uh, but it's a very intense when you start in investment banking. It's hundred hour weeks, and people aren't nice to you, and you work a lot. But the idea was, hey, I'm going to learn a ton, and I'm going to do this for two or three years, and that'll be great, and uh, and I can do whatever I want and take all that knowledge somewhere else. And I hit the ten year mark, had a bit of a crisis, and uh, decided that I needed to start a company that was something different. I just always wanted to be an entrepreneur, and so it was a um, it was a food business business focused it was like a restaurant and catering business and uh shorts well long story short i'm oh, uh the the pandemic just killed us um it was it was one of these anyways we were just we we're very focused on offices and office catering and, and just office lunches and so i went through this whole thing as that was happening uh, around you know hey what should i do now i've kind of i've done investment banking before um i you know the entrepreneurial thing is is a real struggle i i you know i, I went from you know, being very secure in a lot of ways in, in, in what I was doing and beliefs to then just not even being able to sleep at night. I'd wake up at 2 or 3 a.m. and then that would be that. I'd be up, up worrying the rest of the night. And so I ended up making my way back to investment banking and just with like a completely different perspective, though, on it after having been sort of an entrepreneur. And yeah, it was just this journey that I had to go on. And so in and amongst all that happening, I'm, you know, mid 30s, having these conversations with all my friends and former colleagues and everyone just about careers and like, what are we doing? And I realized a lot of other people were having the same sort of ideas of, hey, I've worked in something for 10, 15 years, whatever it might be. And like, is this it? Is this my life? Like, I'm just doing this for another 30, 20, 30 years, and then I retire. And, and so that's the podcast is, is sort of talking about that. What are we trying to get out of our careers, career advice, that sort of thing. So uh, that's, yeah, that's the quick story. That's a great and very interesting backstory. And I love that part of your story kind of really touches on the failure and the struggle of what it's like to be an entrepreneur. I, you know, in the world of podcasts, there's some of that, but there's a lot of, hey, look what I did and it went great and it went perfect. So I love that you kind of are able to start into that story by saying, yeah, it's it's really difficult and I learned a lot from that. So um, talk to our listeners a little bit about you mentioned in your intro and in your backstory that you realized it was kind of time to make a change after you'd been in investment banking for a while and you wanted to try something else. Talk to our listeners a little bit about how do you know when it's time to make a big change, like maybe starting a new career or starting a business or finding a job? What are some of those things that they need to look for to know that that's what they're ready for, that that's the next step? Yeah, I, me personally, I mean, I just kind of got obsessed with it. I, and for me, I mean, I come from a, a family's entrepreneur. Like I knew I was going to be an entrepreneur at one point and wanted to start something. I just didn't know, you know, it was kind of a, it wasn't a, an if, it was a when sort of thing. And so, yeah, it just, it kind of consumed me. It was a kind of an interest level thing. There was no perfect time for me. I felt like, you know, when I was right out of school, probably had the least to lose, but I felt like I didn't know anything and I couldn't be successful. And then, you know, later on in life, I had a kid and, and, a, and a mortgage and all that. And it was, you know, that's not perfect either. There is no perfect time. I think you just have to go ahead and, and do it at some point if, if you know you want to. And yeah, that was, that was what it was like for me. Um, but I do think that, you know, now, a lot of people do side hustles. That's their sort of way of, of doing it. And I, you know, I encourage people like, yeah, if you've got a nine to five, nine, whatever, a nine to five ish type job, if you can commit yourself after, you know, okay, I finished the day to now spend a few more hours after that 
doing some other like hobby thing, whatever it might be that you think might be a future career. And if that like motivates you and gets you excited, like you're kind of ready, like that's probably a good sign. Whereas if you can't be bothered <laughs> and it doesn't interest you and, and then, you know, maybe it's a sign that it, that it isn't. So that's, I mean, that's the very simple indicators I usually like suggest to people. And I sort of saw that in myself where I was just doing that. I just found myself, you know, being super interested and all I wanted to do was work on this new like entrepreneurial project. So at, at that point, it's like, all right, I, I got to do it at some point in my life. Otherwise I'm just going to regret it. Yeah. And I think that's a, kind of a common story for a lot of people that they have the career they thought they'd have. And then their business kind of that passion sort of blossoms and becomes almost maybe starts as a side gig with all of that. And you have that plus you mentioned you had a child as well. Talk to me about work life balance. How are how does it go being an investment banker and an entrepreneur and having a family? What it, what are your best suggestions for creating a good work life balance so you can have maybe that business or career that you want, but also the home life that you want as well? Yeah, somewhere along that the line of all that stuff that I've done, I, I did realize that. I found myself earlier on, so say in that investment banking career, I don't know what year this was, maybe five, six, seven anyways, where I'm doing it. And I realized I, I started thinking a lot about retirement and it was very odd. <laughs> and I realized, recognized it was odd. I was sort of, I'm, I'm late twenties and I'm thinking about retiring and all these things I can do when I retire. And and I, but I, I also recognized that that was a problem, um, that I that I shouldn't be doing that, that there's a certain amount of your life you just have to live and that you're not going to be able to be 20 or 30 or 40 again at a certain point. And so I, I, I think I really appreciated and understood that at some point I just have, you sort of live your life and it's, it's not about sort of doing all these things to get to a point where you can then live your life. You're, you're living it now. And that was a big sort of realization, something that I had to kind of work on. And so I became, once I really truly accepted that idea in myself, I think it allowed me then to, to say no to a lot of things, say no to even as an entrepreneur. I mean, I was, you know, my wife's also very good at saying like, okay, like we have to do this. This is really important stuff and bring, and, and so, you know, having her, whenever she was around, I'd be like, all right, I'm shutting off the business mind as much as I can and thinking about sort of the family or the kid mind. And then when, you know, whatever they were asleep or something, I could always turn it back on. And so it's kind of that, um, but I didn't, you know, it wasn't, certainly wasn't a thing. Like I was very passionate about my business and what I'm doing as I am now. And so it, it doesn't, to me, doesn't feel like work. It's not like something that I'm trying to get away from. It was something really that I was, you know, enjoying and wanting to just do more and more of. So I was sort of surrounded by things I wanted to do a lot. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's how it's, I think that's how it's supposed to be. Maybe that in itself is our, is our takeaway. Stan, I have been hogging all of Greg's time. What are your questions? So Greg, you know, just from what I know about you, what I've read about you, you've done some thinking about the future of work, you know, what, what is work going to look like going forward from here? Do we come back to the office? Do we work at home? How does AI impact that? What's your perspective on what work is going to look like for all of us going forward? Yeah, there's a bunch of interesting trends that's happening. I think the most interesting trend that I've really spent time thinking about a lot lately is just how it like it's merging together. Like our, It's not so much about having a, a job and then a home life. They've really merged together. <laughs> and so they're all kind of inter intertwined and it's 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 becoming a lot more of like of who we are and that could be a bad thing but I don't see it that way and I think that's part of why I do the my podcast is that I think you know a lot of people have this natural tendency to to just say hey work is I'm trying to stay away from it it's bad and 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 hobbies and family is good and I'm trying to do that and anything that kind of gets in the way and pulls me in the wrong direction is you know I'm trying to get away from that too and I, I actually think that what we're trying to do in a lot of ways is find a job or an occupation, something that can make us money that we enjoy doing. Like, I do think that that is what, that is the journey. Like that's, I feel like that's the journey that I'm on. And so, you know, as it relates to the world of, of work, people now are really, you know, despite the, Hey, where am I working and all this sort of stuff, they are really focused on um, like you guys, like the, the legacy, the, the, the impact that they're having on the world, it, a job, if, if I'm just going to give you an extra you know, ten thousand dollars to do your job. It's not doesn't motivate you anymore. It's not more exciting. What would be more exciting is you're being involved on a really cool project and getting sort of the, the credit for it or the um, you know feeling like you've done and accomplished something. And I, I think we're more and more trying to do that. And so you know, I, I do feel like that is the where a lot of people are sort of headed and trying to understand. Hey, I've got this job. What what does it mean to me? 
how, you know, what impact am I having? And, you know, that's one of the, I don't know, the cool kind of future trends I see, like people just valuing more and more. And you have means in many cases, people are going and starting their own thing and it may be by themselves or maybe a small group. And, um, it, you, you know, you can get the same thing though from a very large organization if it's structured properly, but, you know, people striving for that and trying to figure out, Hey, how do I get that is, is probably, I don't know, the biggest thing that I see right now. So I saw an interview the other day, uh, on CNBC, with, and uh, the CEO of a major company in the U.S. had just announced that uh, they were instituting a policy that required employees to come back to work three days a week. And I'm watching this interview, and I notice that at the bottom of the screen, the CEO was the CEO of Zoom. Yeah. So, so you know that product, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm wondering, what are you finding? And I, I know you're out there a lot. You're interacting with a lot of people around this issue what's what's your take on where are we going to end up in two or three years on the work from home all the time or no you've got to come back to the office all the time where are we going to land on that so my take is that there are people who really like work from home slash need it and there are people who don't and they really want a human interaction they want a place to go and the problem that we have is that everyone is like everyone who are at company like this is all of a sudden happened so if you're at a company you may be at a company that identifies with one or the other and you don't like you didn't really plan that when you were going to college and finding a job and moving and everything and all of a sudden now you have to consider that and that's hard so i think you just end up i think that's what's happening now you just have a bunch of people at jobs who you know i like the job but i don't like this element of it and over time what should happen is that people will will gravitate towards the types of roles, the fields where they just, where they get that, right? Where they get a ton of that human interaction and the in-person and they will get the, or if they don't want that, then just the, hey, I'm purely, I can work at home in my pajamas all day. And we just have those those different people. The, the, the interesting nuance to me though, is that like, I am certainly an introvert in a lot of ways, though I try really hard not to be. And the um, part of community, like we're just human beings that need community. We need people, we need to interact. And if it's just not enough, I don't think, to be on screen. And so when you're missing that, I do think that you then need to find where that community is, right? Like a lot of ways used to just be work and you would go and that would be, you know, you'd be excited to talk about the TV show that was on the day before or what your kids did or whatever with your colleague. And that was sort of how it, how, how that was your life. And if you don't have that now, because you're working from home, doesn't actually happen, then I think that something is missing and you got to go in search of that community somewhere else. And I do think that's like just a, another cool and interesting facet of the future of work as well. Yeah. So that's a response from the perspective of the employee. If you're the employer, do you think it's possible to, to get the same level of productivity from a team that works remotely, works virtually from home? Or do you, do you think they really need to be at the office some? No, I think I 100% think you can do both, but you do have to build your organization, the expectations, your your goals, everything that way, right? If young people that you're bringing up in the company are learning by being around people and it's like this osmosis thing and whatever, which is kind of the case in our industry, then yes, they kind of need to be around. Otherwise, they're, just, they're, they're, they're not going to get enough out of the Zoom. But if, um, but if you organize your culture around that, where there is that support and and all that, then I, I think you can totally get it. So because people are doing it, right? There are in many cases a lot of uh, claims and and stats and studies and whatever on the, the, the you know people being more productive or companies being more productive uh, when they've flipped to remote. And so it it just I think it a lot of it depends on just sort of how you work. And some of us are getting stuck a little bit in between where we're like you know this three day stuff or two or four day. Um, where we aren't quite sure. And, but that being said, there could be a good balance there where it's like, Hey, I can get this human interaction. I can get this like learning from a company perspective that I need. And then I also have time to, to myself, I guess, to, to, to kind of get work done at home. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of that depends on personality as well. Um, you know, you mentioned that you were an introvert and so probably for you, part of you're an introvert, but trying not to be, I think is what you said. And so I do think it's been interesting in that post COVID trend to really see kind of 
the types of people that have flourished in a work from home environment versus the types of people who like it was a mental health crisis and they really struggled feeling more isolated in a work environment. So I love the advice that you gave us for that, which was, you know, if you are in a work from home setting, a virtual setting, find a group somewhere, you know, maybe it's a group of friends you hang out with. Maybe it's to join a workout class. Maybe it's a church group, whatever. But to make sure you're getting that type of interaction, uh, I think that that's that is wise wisdom for those. A lot of the people listening to the show right now are working from home. And so um, good stuff for that. What are some other upcoming trends that you see coming? Um, and what are some of the bits of wisdom you've learned through? I want to touch before we run out of time about your podcast. So talk to us about what our listeners can really expect from your podcast and what some of the things you have learned from your guests on that podcast are. Um, yeah, I would say, you know, some of the key takeaways or, tra- or just things that I see a lot um, in in the podcast are a, a little bit of what I was talking before around people trying to achieve, uh, trying to achieve something, right? They, they reach a point, I think, at the beginning of their careers where they are just trying to learn as much as possible. And then you, you sort of reach to a point where now you're like, okay, what am I building? What am I doing? What am I, how am I going to accomplish such and such? And so I think that's really important um, and key. A lot of the people on my podcast though, and, and I don't think this is representative of the, of the, of the world, but they, they bring it up very often is that you, you see a lot of these studies and, you know, something like 60, 70% of people hate, like, don't like their jobs. Like they have this negative perception on, right. on it. They, they would rather sort of not go to work and, and they're just unhappy with, with their jobs. And it, it, you know, most of the people that I talk to um, who are excited and want to get on podcast, you know, find that crazy. And I, I kind of do too. Like I, I, I sort of feel that the journey of a job is in a lot of ways to find that thing that you like and to like it. And when you don't like it, then change something. And it, it is something that really pops up, though, this idea that, hey, you know, you you can find something that is that is really good. And a lot of ways and times, it's not just the position. It, it's not like you have to go and work on your own or without a boss or whatever. It's it's a lot of it's in our heads. And we don't necessarily recognize it. We, we sort of you know blame other people or we blame whatever. We, we blame our situation. We blame our boss or something like that for you know not enjoying something. I, I did that for sure when I was earlier in my career of saying like, hey, this is this is boring or hey, I'm not being challenged or hey, I don't have enough influence. And so you know, but in a lot of ways, it's it's up to us to kind of push for what we want out there. And so yeah, I'm seeing that a lot as kind of a trend and just you know having that conversation with a lot of people. Talk to us a little bit too. So the name of your podcast is Lifetime at Work. And in it, it you know, your bio says it, you kind of explore jobs and what they mean to our lives. And I love that you make the point we spend so much of our lives at work. So, you know, what are your tips? How do we make that count? If we're spending so much of our days, whether we're virtual or in person and all of these different things, how do we make our time spent at work really count and make us feel productive and fulfilled? Yeah, it's one of these. I think that's part of the reason why I had the podcast or, or started the podcast. I remember interviewing one of my good friends from high school and he's a cardiologist actually and i spent 45 minutes or an hour talking to him and i'm like i've never actually talked to you about your job and why you did this and it takes a long time to be a cardiologist and like i'm glad we had this conversation and so my, my number one tip for people is just like start talking about it we have this aversion we're supposed to like our jobs we have aversion to saying negative things or to be or to talking i think rationally about it and, and just saying hey i here's what i want here are the things and so i just feel like getting that out there and that openness to being able to at least talk about your job and what you're trying to get out of it is is important and so you know that's the form really for for what i'm doing and and i hope that you know that inspires people to then listen to the podcast and then have that conversation and, and sometimes it's hard. It's like sometimes you, you can't talk to your colleagues about it the same way because they're, you know, conflicted or, um, you know, they have a certain perspective and it's just not the right person to necessarily talk to it about, talk to about. So, um, you know, that's, I think that's who I'm talking to. In a lot of cases too, it's, it's, you know, help for younger people. I think, you know, earlier in your career where you're, maybe you're doing a job, but you're not quite sure where you're going, though it happens like, you know, in your thirties and your forties and, you know, it sort of morphs into being, okay, well, I'm, I'm running out of time here. I can only, I can't necessarily just all of a sudden change careers. So am I in the right place? Am I getting enough out of my career today? And that's like kind of the big question that I'm sort of trying to answer. It doesn't necessarily have an answer. <laughs> it's different for everyone. Yeah. So Greg, I, 
I notice you talk about purpose. I'm really curious to hear your take on the importance of purpose in work. Yeah, I think what is hard to do is figuring out why we like a job and what drives us and what gets us excited. I also think that we over complicate it probably as well. And we think about it too much. I listen to a lot of podcasts, Tim Ferriss and, and you know, these work productivity type people. And I think they really analyze themselves like crazy. And I, I think, you know, my take on it is having to simplify it a bit. Like, can you just find something that you like to do that you're good at? And the key thing being though, you need to always be improving or getting better. And I, I do find that that really helps with the purpose and the fulfillment thing, because as you are finding and doing something that you're, again, we like things that we're good at. My kids like uh, have young kids, my seven-year-old. And like, if he's not good at something, he just doesn't like, you know, I've really got to push him. But if he's like scoring goals and whatever, like he just wants to do it. And you need that. You need to be motivated by some success. It's not all going to be success. That's, that's not, that's not necessarily what you need. It doesn't necessarily motivate you, but, um, you know, finding something again, that you're good at, where you can make an impact and influence where you can, you know, be important is really, I think key and, and shows our purpose, um, in a lot of ways. The other thing that I didn't really touch on before, but is, I think is super important and, and has come about through a lot of conversations I have is with, is just like the concept of people that, you know, we're, a job and even finding that purpose, but finding a good a job or situation of work more generally is, is around people and surrounding yourself around people that you relate to, that you like being around, because frankly, that's what you're doing. And if you don't like the people around you, then you're just, you know, you're going to be miserable. And if you can find people that are optimistic and like you and you can identify with, then you're going to be happy. So yeah, a lot of our intrinsic like hey purpose finding a place in the world and everything really comes out of work and it's it is that journey to find it don't you think humans need to make an impact isn't there something innate in the dna of who we are that uh, causes us to need to be able to to make an impact i see that yeah if you believe in evolution i think you know who is left <laughs> or or yeah. who are the people that are the people who were, you know, they, they solved problems, they could create things, they could take on the world that they were ambitious, people who weren't probably got eaten. So, I, you know, over yeah. time, we just, I think that's who we are, ultimately. And so we still need that to, to feel good about ourselves. And, and, you know, that's, so, you know, there's a lot of energy there, we have so much energy, we can do so many things. So it's where, you know, hey, where are we channeling that energy? A lot of the work that Stan and I do is, really encouraging people to think about their legacy. So whether that is the the industry leaders that are in our Legacy Leaders Network program or whether it is our law firm clients, we really try to encourage people to think about the big picture and how they can use the tools and the resources and the skills that they have in their own sphere and their own sphere of influence to make a positive impact on the world, whatever that may be for them. So through the work that you're doing and the podcast and the connections you're making, Greg, what is what is your hope? What do you hope your legacy will be? Yeah, I'm going to try a slightly different answer. I, I feel that, so I work in the world of M&A. My job is to sell business. When someone's had enough and they want to retire, uh, they come to us and we will typically help them sell their business. And sometimes it's a, it's a six month process. Sometimes that takes years to really sort of do it and fully kind of get out of your business. And it's interesting because in most cases, it's people who have spent like blood, sweat, tears, like uh, their family, they've given up everything to build this business. And then they just want to sell it for like, you know, for money, right? They're just like, how many million can I get? And I'm done. And it, it, it's sort of, um, you're, you're kind of transitioning your legacy, right? Your legacy was this business and now you're turning it into money. And then you got to take that money <laughs> and somehow turn that into it. And I think my answer would be in terms of the, the legacy part of it is to actually kind of take money out of it. Um, and probably isn't necessarily what everyone says to you guys, but it's stuff like this. It is, it's, it's podcasts, it's writing stuff, it's books, it's 
something that you can give back after having spent all this time doing whatever you're doing, whatever your passion was, and then giving that. And it doesn't need to be like the whole world has read it or listened to it. Like I, I'm on these podcasts. Um, every once in a while, I have my own podcast. Um, I, I hope my kids and their maybe grandkids, my grandkids and their grandkids or whatever, listen to it and they can have a sense for who maybe I was if they are looking for inspiration in the future, because a lot of these things don't change. And that's maybe all that I expect sort of the legacy to be if I, whatever, if I, if they inherit hundreds of millions of dollars from me, I mean, maybe they'll be appreciative of that, but I'm thinking that they may be more appreciative of the advice and the impact and the ideas. And so I maybe leave that to people around, you know, this concept and idea of legacy. I love that. A very, that's a good answer. Yeah. Do you have anything, Greg, that we didn't talk about that you'd like our listeners to know about? No, we covered we covered it pretty well. I think we sort of got it. I, again, the uh, the podcast lifetime at work, and um, you know, always looking for good guests and good people and good conversations. And I think you know what I do and in, in, inspire a lot of people to do. Like I tend to listen to a lot of different podcasts to get different, you know, no matter what, like perspectives on the world and things. And you don't have to listen to them for the rest of your life. It's like, <laughs> pick a few good episodes, listen to them, and it can it can really help. So, you know, whether it's my podcast or someone else's and, and you know, I, I, I just, I encourage people to do that because you get interesting perspectives. I was listening to your podcast earlier today and I'm like, okay, like there's just, again, your approach and different ways of doing it and, and just different guests and angles is just, I, I don't know, a good way to um, for me, especially as an introvert, as we discussed, I, I don't have to do any of the talking and I get to intake and have, almost feel like I'm having a conversation. So yeah, that's about it. Perfect. I love that. Well, for those that have joined us, thank you so much. This has been the Legacy Leaders Podcast with your hosts, Stan Miller and Katie Beth Hand. And our guest today was Greg Martin. For more information on Greg and the work that he does and to check out the podcast, you can visit lifetimeatwork.com. And you can also find Greg on LinkedIn. We will link both of those things in the show notes for you. Greg, thank you again so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. You've been listening to the Legacy Leaders Podcast with Katie Beth Hand and Stan Miller. For more information on them and the show, please visit PinnacleLegacyLaw.com. If you like what you've learned today, do share the program with your friends and subscribe wherever podcasts are found.